How long have you been working with uh, Naked Raku? I started in 2005. And the first result, I'd been doing Raku for a long time, coloured Raku. Mm -hmm. And I'd been doing that for a long time. And I'd had the recipe for a resist slip because that's what this is all about. Underneath the glaze is a slip so that the glaze comes off. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, oh, let's have a bash at that. And I did. And uh, just, it was just like, oh, instant love. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get in the end. And I put all these layers on at this stage and then carved through it. And then I put it in a kiln. And, and what comes out is what's dictated by all of those steps. Mm -hmm. And none of them are... I can't mush them around like oil paint. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's... I wish it was more like oil paint. And is it... So what you're doing just now, is that you're... What are you preparing for? Is it? So this is the last part of the glazing and slipping process. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, these fine lines I'm carving with the toothpick will be the darkest black lines right. in the piece. Where the clay is bare, the smoke from the kiln will penetrate that. Right. See these raised bits? Mm -hmm. So we've got thick glaze and thick slip, and the smoke will penetrate that in a different way. Okay. Whereas these bare bits with these fine lines, that'll be black. That'll so they'll be, black, be the darkest. Black. Mm. That'll be the blackest line. So is this phrase painting with smoke? Is this, is this to sort of explain? Yes. What, what you, how how the effect comes about? Yes, particularly with this Louisian nice, where I really want the tonal gradation, mm -hmm. and and I get that by layering different thicknesses of slip and glaze on right. the piece. And of course, at the end of it, this is all going to come off. But yeah, uh, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah, and I mean that's the whole thing about ceramics, you know. Nothing's ever that simple. As soon as you start working with glaze and heat, mm. you know, it uh, doesn't matter whether it's porcelain or earthenware or anything really. Uh, it requires a great deal of patience and testing and persistence. So it all looks completely benign, right? But it's <laughs> 830 degrees. And I have to say, I mean, I'm, I'm still fairly obsessed with it. I mean, you can't put this amount of work into something. No. <laughs> without being obsessed. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was wondering if this business of do do different mediums suit different temperaments of artists almost. I mean, I don't think it's everybody that could would have the patience or the determination or the the willingness just to to have faith that something something will happen. Well, well don't you think that that mediums that the artists that come to their medium, it's not it's not necessarily a conscious choice. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's just that it fits you. I mean, I like painting. I've done quite a lot of painting, uh, and I keep thinking I'll go back to it. But primarily, I love making. You know, it's the same with I think you know all artists. Mm. They've they've got to find what really is their passion. Yeah, yeah. And where well, you feel at home, where this is it. This is who I am. And I can't say I'm the kind of patient person that that I would have thought. You know, I've become patient mm. because this is my medium. Mm -hmm. It's not the other way. I'm, I wasn't a patient person to start. Well, it's maybe sure. interesting that the, the medium teaches you things as oh, much as does. you're making it really out does. of it. It's, it's also teaching you things um, as a person, maybe. Yeah, I think that's probably true too. So the, the inspiration from nature, the, the natural form of the rocks and things, is that, is that something that's just sort of developed over the years? Um, or was there a moment where you thought this is just... this is? It, it was actually a student. I mean, I've always loved rocks. I've been taking mm. photographs of rocks and erosion and collected rocks all my life. I've, I actually made my first rocks in a studio in London about 40 years ago. Um, I, I, but I first kind of forgot about it until I started making them again. And somebody came to Open Studios and looked at it and said, Oh, that's just like Louisa and Nice. I went, what? Ah. <laughs> what? And I went, what? <laughs> and she sent me some photographs. I was like, so it is. <laughs> wow. Okay. So. <laughs> You've sort of been doing it without realising, you know, it's, it's been informing yeah, your yeah, work. Yeah, without... yeah, 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 without me knowing. <laughs> uh, so that was just like, yeah, okay. I really like this idea. So, you know, I've been 
doing that ever since. So after this stage is finished, what, what will happen then? They'll go in the kiln. So it'll go straight in the kiln? Yeah, and it goes in the kiln and we'll just see how it comes out. So you can see that all that embossed thick stuff is all coming off. Ooh yeah, look at that, ooh yeah. When something comes out really nicely after all the work you put into it, it's, it's in this process, it's still magical.